طيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين All praise and thanks belongs to Allah سبحانه وتعالى And may the peace and blessing of Allah be upon his servant and final messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم As to what follows my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he forgive our sins and accept our good deeds and grant us sincerity and steadfastness until the day we meet him bi ta'ala. My brothers and sisters in Islam, I want to speak to you today about the white days, otherwise known in Arabic as ayyamul bid. And I'm speaking about this because uh, today, Thursday, the 25th of February, is the first day of the white days of the month of Rajab. So the white days are 13 and 14 and 15 of every Islamic month. These are the white days. And the white days, Ayyam al bid are known as this, or they're given this name, the white days, because on these days, the 13th, 14th and 15th of every Islamic month, on those days, the moon is full and it's complete and the moon is bright and it's shining white in the sky. So they were called Ayyamul Bilb, the white days, because of the quality of the moon and the whiteness of the moon. And the, the scholars, rahimahumullah, have unanimously agreed that it is highly recommended to fast these three days, 13th, 14th and 15th of every Islamic month. And today is the 13th of uh, Rajab. Uh, and of course, the ulama rahimahumullah also mentioned that if a person wasn't able to fast these three days, 13th, 14th and 15th, then it is permissible to fast any three days of the Islamic month. And it has been reported that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would fast at the beginning of a month, in the middle of a month, and the end of a month. But we're speaking about the white days and the best and most rewarding and highest way of fasting the three months of uh, the three days of every month would be to do a Yamul Bid, 13th, 14th, and 15th of every Islamic month. And it is so highly recommended to fast that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself did not only encourage it and he advised certain sahaba to do this, yet, but rather he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would fast these white days whether he was residing in his hometown in Medina or whether he was traveling. He wouldn't leave them out at all, whether a resident or a traveler, subhanallah. Just like Sunnat al-Fajr. You know, Sunnat al-Fajr, the two rak'at before the fard, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would not leave that under any circumstance. If he was a traveler, he'd pray Sunnat al-Fajr, and if he was residing at home in Medina, he would also um, observe and pray those two rak'at, Sunnat al-Fajr. So these three days, the 13th, 14th, and 15th, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would uh, commit to fasting them whether he's residing in Medina or whether he was a traveler. Now, I want to share with you 10 reasons for why we should fast them. And I hope and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he opens your hearts and opens your mind and opens your soul, that uh, you find inspiration in these 10 reasons. And bi-idhnillahi ta'ala, I ask Allah azza wa jal that by the end of this lesson, you're able, between you and yourself, you're able to commit to fasting three days a month. Of course, except for Ramadan in where it is obligatory to fast the entire month. Let's begin with the first reason. And this is يعني, surprisingly something that Al-Ummah is ignorant about. Hardly anyone knows that this is a reason for why one should fast three days of every month. And let me share it with you. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, this is the first reason, صيام ثلاثة أيام من كل شهر يذهب وحر الصدر الله أكبر incredible حديث النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم he said fasting three days of every Islamic month it removes it wipes away وحر الصدر 
وحر الصدر meaning the evil qualities and the evil character of the heart. It removes away evil qualities and character and attitudes of the heart. This is what fasting three days of every month does. والعلماء رحمهم الله when they explained وحر الصدر the evil qualities of the heart they said هو غشه ووساوسه it's the evil thoughts and the doubts that creep in the minds and in the hearts of people. So when you're bothered by doubts and uh, doubts and misrepresentations of Islam and you're confused, fasting three days of every month wipes away the doubts you have concerning Allah, concerning the hereafter, concerning the life of the grave, concerning the rulings and legislations of Allah. It wipes it away. Because when a person fasts, obviously you can only do that if you're absolutely certain in Allah Azza wa Jal and the reward of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So it removes the doubts of the heart. And Wahar al-Sadr also includes the evil whispering of a shaitan. Fasting three days of every month of every month will remove a shaitan and his evil whispering away from your life. You will find peace and satisfaction and tranquility when this shaitan is removed. How so? By fasting three days of every Islamic month. Allahu Akbar. Yudhibu wahar al-sadr. Also, al-ulama rahimahumullah said that wahar al-sadr is a jealousy, it's anger, it's rage, it's the hatred that you have in your heart. It's ashadul ghadab, the anger and the enraging anger. All of these qualities are removed by fasting three days of every month. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Yani, doesn't everyone complain of this? Doesn't everyone have some evil form of quality in his heart? You know, people complain about hypocrisy. I don't know if I have jealousy in my heart. If you experience jealousy and you don't know how to control your jealousy, Fast three days of every Islamic month and you'll see the benefit of this. You will see the benefit. It removes, fasting three days of every month removes these harmful, evil, dirty qualities that are attached to our heart. Allahu Akbar. And anger as well. When you're angry, watch. Fast three days of every month and see the effect it's going to have in your life. Bi'ithnillahi ta'ala. My brothers and sisters in Islam, wallah, it is very important that we focus on our heart and keep it clean. There are some people, subhanAllah, they are more concerned in keeping their clothes clean and their shoes shiny and their hair polished and waxed and gelled and whatever it is. They're concerned with their outer appearance more they are concerned with the purity and the cleanliness of their heart. And this is dangerous. This is dangerous. It's good. On the outside to look clean and presentable, no problems. Will Islam encourage that? Your clothes to be clean, your hair to be clean and, 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 and look after it. But more importantly, your heart must be clean. Your heart must be shiny and that must be pure. And you need to focus and concentrate on that more. So the believer from time to time, you need to find ways and solutions on how to clean your heart. And there we go. Fasting three days of every month. Guaranteed bi idnillah yuvhibu wahar al sadr. It completely abolishes and it removes all the nasty, evil features of the heart. Allahu Akbar. And you know, my brothers and sisters in Islam, why am I saying this? Because on the day of judgment, nothing is going to benefit us. Absolutely nothing. No wealth, no children, no asset, no money, nothing you gathered and collected in this worldly life will benefit you on the day of judgment. Except for one thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this in Surah Al-Shu'ara. He said, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ On that day in which no wealth and no children and no generation will be of benefit to you whatsoever. إِذَنْ O Allah, what is the thing that's going to benefit us on the day of judgment? He said, إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Except who comes on the day of judgment with a qalb, with a heart that has been described as salim. Salim. يعني a heart that is clean, that is not damaged. A heart that is not damaged. And you know, 
What does Salim mean? Salim, as I said to you, it means something that is not damaged and it's preserved. For example, for example, if I gave you a pen, I gave you a pen, and I said to you, and it was a new pen, I said to you, return this pen back to me, Saliman. Return it back to me, Saliman. It means, please, borrow this pen, use it for what you want, but bring it back to me in the same condition I gave you. So I don't want to see it broken or something torn away from it or you've colored it. Bring it back as it is. This is Salim. Allah Azza wa Jalla, He says, the only thing that will benefit you on the day of judgment, if you come back to Allah with a heart that is Salim. You know what that means? It means when you are born, how clean was your heart? How clean and fresh and pure was your heart? You need to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exactly with the same heart He gave you when you were born. When you were born, it was clean, it was pure, it was innocent, it was upon al-fitrah. So you need to come back on the day of judgment with a pure, clean heart, like a baby's heart. That is what will benefit you on the day of judgment. Al-qalbu salim the pure heart, is the heart that is clean from shirk and all the forms of shirk, the minor and the major. Al-Qalbu Salim is the heart that is cleansed from all sins and evil doings and evil words. Al-Qalbu Salim is the heart that is not damaged. It's clean from all evil qualities. It's cleansed from arrogance and hypocrisy. And it's cleansed from jealousy. And it's cleansed from anger. This is a Qalb Salim. In other words, there's no shirk, there's no sins, and there is no bad character to this heart whatsoever. This is what we want to try to achieve in this worldly life before we die. Because the only thing that will benefit you on the day of judgment before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a clean heart. Qalbin salim. Allahu Akbar. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Wallah, sins, they damage the heart. Sins, they burn the heart. They make the heart black, dirty. Allahu Akbar. You know, if sins made the black stone black. You know the black stone that is at the Kaaba? Initially it was a white stone. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, سَوَّدَتْهُ ذُنُوبُ بَنِي Adam," That the sins of mankind turned it black. Every time a person was to kiss this stone, over the many years, it became black from the sins of people. So if this is the effect sins had on a rock, Imagine what effect it's going to have on the heart. But I give you hope. The black stone will always become black. It'll never go white again. However, your heart, if it's black, it still has the chance to turn white and pure and shiny and be polished. It has the chance. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِنَّ الْعَبْدَ إِذَا أَخْطَأْ Whenever the servant commits a sin or a bad deed. A black dot is etched and engraved in his heart. A black dot is drawn on his heart. Then this servant, the slave that committed the sin, if he was to stop the sin, abandon the sin, and seek Allah's forgiveness sincerely, وتاب, and he repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by moving away from the sin. سُقِلَ قَلْبُهُ His heart would become polished. Allahu Akbar. The black heart will become polished, meaning his heart will become clean and pure. And every single black dot that was drawn on his heart would be removed. All of it will be removed. Allahu Akbar. And I'm saying to you, Fasting three days of every month cleanses the heart from all its evil deeds and evil qualities and evil doings. For we need to fast these three days. It will benefit you greatly on the day of judgment because it helps clean the heart and a clean heart before Allah Azza wa Jal is what will benefit you. Subhanallah, subhanallah. My brothers and sisters in Islam, the second reason for why we should fast these three days is because fasting these three days 
or any fasting in general, is a great weapon against a person's desire. Fasting is a great weapon against a person's desire. The haram desire I'm speaking about. And you know, how many people today complain that they cannot control their desire? They cannot control their gaze, especially when it's the months of summer or you know, with plenty of fit and around in the world, especially the mobile phones, how everyone could sit in a room and watch what's haram on hours and hours on end. Not only that, people are watching the haram at work. People are watching the haram while they drive their cars, not fearing that Allah Azza wa Jal could send upon them anything that would destroy them at that moment. Yani, a long time ago, when there were only desktops, people would watch the haram in their house. Now when it's on the phone, people are watching the haram in their car, in the bathroom, in the workplace, Allahu Akbar. And I don't know of any case of a person watching something haram in the masjid, but it's not far-fetched. Allahu Akbar, people could do anything. Well, shaitan has deceived and fooled the people. Even fasting is a great weapon against a person's desire. Fasting destroys the desire. Fasting gives you control over your desire. It gives you control over your uncontrolled desire and uncontrolled gaze. Where's the proof for this? Where's the proof for this? And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, you know, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he advised the person that's unable to marry, that's unable to find someone to get married to, what did he advise him? And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised such people that don't have the means to get married. Let's say he doesn't have money. He didn't find a spouse yet or whatever it is. He said to him, فَعَلَيْهِ بِالصَّوْمِ Then commit to fasting. فَإِنَّهُ لَهُ وِجَاءٍ Because fasting, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, fasting is a means to control and reduce a person's sexual desire. Allahu oh, Akbar. And this is why you need to fast three days of every month to control your desire, to suppress this desire that's going to destroy you. My brother and sister in Islam, if you don't do anything about it. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, فَعَلَيْهِ بِالصَّوْمِ Commit to fasting. فَإِنَّهُ أَغَضُّ لِلْبَصَرْ وَأَحْصَنُ لِلْفَرْجِ because fasting is a means that will control a person's gaze and it'll protect his private parts. It'll protect him from a zina and from doing anything haram, just like zina in, a, in where a person fulfills his desire. This is the effect of fasting and it's experienced. I don't need to sit down and explain to you how this happens. Anyone that fasts realizes that he's able to control his desire much more than a person that is not fasting. This is very true, my brothers and sisters in Islam. A fasting person has more control over his gaze and over his tongue and over his desire more than a person that is not fasting. You know why? Why? Why, why so? Because a fasting person truly and genuinely fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where's the proof for this? You know in Surah Al-Baqarah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about fasting and he said that fasting has been prescribed upon you just like it was prescribed upon those before you. Why? What was the purpose of fasting? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may attain taqwa. That was, the fa- pa- well, that was the purpose of fasting. The purpose of fasting is to attain taqwa. So a fasting person is truly and genuinely fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A fasting person. If we told him, go to your room, no one will see you. Go to your room and eat something. Would he do it? Would a fasting person go to his room when he knows no one is watching him and eat? Would he do it? Wallahi, he will not do it. And if we ask him, why didn't you eat when no one was in the room to see you? He would say, Wallahi, he would say, because Allah is watching over me. Allah, Allahu Akbar. Where did this taqwa come from? That's what fasting does. It puts that taqwa inside the people. And so as a result, this is why I'm saying a fasting person has control over his gaze. He knows how to lower his gaze and turn away from looking at that which is haram. And a fasting person is able to control his desire. Because if the gaze is controlled, if you're not looking at what's haram, then bi ta'ala, your private part 
will not be engaged in that which is haram, subhanallah. So this is the second reason for why we should commit to this fasting, especially for those people who have this problem in where they cannot control their desire, or people that are finding it difficult to get married because they don't have the financial means to do so, or they haven't found the right spouse yet. The third reason for why we should fast these three days and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, صوم ثلاثة أيام من كل شهر صوم الدهر. الله أكبر. But incredible stuff. Look at the mercy and the compassion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's like Allah azza wa jal wants us to have extra reward. Yeah, look at the mercy of Allah azza wa jal. You know, in this hadith, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, fasting three days of every month is equal to Fasting the entire year. Yani yeah, you get the reward of fasting the entire year. And what do you have to do? All you have to do is fast three days of every month. Wallah subhanahu wa ta'ala will write the reward as though you have fasted the entire year. How does this work? Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Man ja'a bil hasanati falahu ashuru amthaliha. Anyone who comes with one good deed. Allah Azza wa Jal multiplies it 10 times for him, 10 times for him. So if you fast three days of every month, then each day is 10 days. So 10, 20, 30, that's a month. And if you do that for every month, there you go. You earn the reward of fasting 12 months an entire year. Allahu Akbar. How beautiful is this? What a bargain this is. What a deal it is. Look at the deals Allah Azza wa Jal gave us. You give me three days and I will write for you the reward of 30 days as though you fasted them. Yani there is a potential that you can earn the reward of fasting every single day of your life from now until the day you die. How? Just fast three days of every month. Karamullah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unlimited. It's endless. This is the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani, I say to you that I'm sharing these ahadith in hope that I encourage you. Lakin Allah Azza wa Jal before anything is encouraging us. When Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is encouraging us and all we're doing is sharing the message. The fourth reason for why you should commit to fasting three days of every month and the preferable three days, as we said, Ayyamul Bid, 13th, 14th, 15th of every Islamic month. The fourth reason is that there's a special door in the paradise. This door is called Babur Rayyan. Babur Rayyan. None shall enter this door except the fasting people, except people who had a habit with fasting, except people who had a consistent, continuous relationship with fasting. Not on and off, people that had a continuous relationship with fasting. They enter through a special door in the paradise called Ar-Rayyan. What a beautiful name. Ar-Rayyan, and, and you know, this name, it, it fits, يعني, it, it's, it's a beautiful name. The, the word Rayyan, you know what it means? It comes from the word Ar-Ray. Ar-Ray means to drink until you're satisfied. And you know, when someone is thirsty and then he drinks until he's satisfied, that's called Ar-Ray. We say Irtawa. Arrayan means to drink, to quench your thirst. What a beautiful name for the door and a suitable name for the door. Because those who enter this door experienced thirst in this worldly life when they were fasting. So Allah Azza wa Jal compensates them on the day of judgment and admits them into the paradise through a door called quenching the thirst. Drinking until you're satisfied. Allahu Akbar. What a beautiful name for this door. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Inna fil jannati baban yuqalu lahu rayyan yadkhulu minhu al-sa'imun yawm al-qiyamah la yadkhulu ma'ahum ahadun yuqalu ayna al-sa'imun fayadkhuluna minhu fa'idha dakhala akhirum uglaq uglaqa falam yadkhul minhu ahad. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, that in the paradise, there is a door called Ar-Rayyan. None shall enter this door except those who are committed to the worship of fasting. And no one will enter with them, only them. 
Allah would say to them on the day of judgment, Ayn as-sa'imun, where are the fasting people? Allahu Akbar, imagine this. Allah is calling out, where are the fasting people? When they imagine you're standing there, or definitely you would regret the moment. Or absolutely you'll regret the moment. If you are a person that committed to fasting, you will definitely regret it. You'll say, I wish, I wish I had fasted. So I can, so I can answer the call of my Lord. So I can answer the call of Allah when he says, Ayn as-sa'imun. Allahu Akbar. Don't, don't, don't afford and don't accept for yourself to stand on the plains of the day of judgment. When the call Ayn as-sa'imun is being called and you're looking left and right of you thinking, why am I not part of them? Don't fall in that regret, my brothers and sisters in Islam. So Allah Azza wa Jal will call them. Where are they? فَيَدْخُلُونَ مِنْهُ So they know the door and they recognize that this door, Ar-Rayyan, is open for them. So they enter this door. When Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, فَإِذَا دَخَلَ آخِرُهُمْ When the last person enters, what a regret, what a sad moment. When the last person enters, أُغْلَقْ the door closes, the door locks. Babur Rayyan is sealed, it's shut. فَلَمْ يَدْخُلْ مِنْهُ أَحَدٍ No one will enter after them. خلاص, that's it. These people have, have, have gone, you know, have gone in, inside the paradise. They've been in creation, they've been in all of mankind. They're in the paradise. And people that never committed to fasting, Allahu A'lam, they're still waiting outside, awaiting their fate. Where are they going to go? Don't waste the chance, my brothers and sisters in Islam. Come on. All it is is three days of every month. That's all. Three days of every month for Allah. For Allah. There's sweetness in it. There is barakah in it. There is mercy in it. There's health in it for your body. Allahu Akbar. There's a spiritual revival for your soul and for your heart. There's nourishment for your heart. I had a three days fasting of every month. So beautiful. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, as Allah azza wa jal says, يَدَعُ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ مِنْ أَجْلِي Allah azza wa jal, when he described the fasting person, he said that this fasting person, he leaves off food and drink, and he leaves off his desire for my sake. Assalam. Wallahi, this is a word you need to sit down and ponder over it. Allah is saying that you're doing it for his sake. What does that mean? That means fasting is the most sincere deed one could ever do. If you're worried about your sincerity, fast. If you can commit to fasting, bi'idhnillah, you're from among the righteous, sincere servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah azza wa jal affirmed sincerity for the fasting person. He said that he leaves his food and drink and desire min ajli for my sake. How can you hear this and not sense the beauty in Iman and not sense the sweet taste in fasting? Yes, fasting, even though you're not eating anything, but there's a sweet taste to it. Allahu Akbar. So let me share with you the fifth reason for why we should commit to fasting and make a habit of it. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was approached by Abu Umam al-Bahili radiyallahu anhu. And he said to him, Ya Rasulullah, awsini, give me advice. For the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, alayka bil sawm, fa innahu la idla lahu. Allahu Akbar. He said to him, Abu Umam, you're asking for advice. He said to him, alayka bil sawm. Commit to fasting. Commit it. Make a habit of fasting. So then, okay, I do that, and what's the benefit? He said to him, فَإِنَّهُ لَا عِدْلَ لَهُ There is nothing like it. Allahu Akbar. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, there is nothing like fasting. What does that mean? It means there is nothing like fasting that will cleanse your heart. There is nothing like fasting that will purify your soul. There is nothing like fasting that will bring you closer to Allah. There is nothing like fasting that will keep you away from the shaitan and temptations of the haram. Absolutely, fasting is the number one weapon against all evils in your life. And it brings you the closest you can to Allah. You know why? Because when a person fasts, he, the hunger is, yani the body experiences hunger and thirst. So 
The human being is made up of two parts, his body and soul. So if the body is starved, when the body starves, what has a chance to rise? The soul. The soul. Once again, a human being is made of a body and soul. When your body is starved, you're not eating anything, you're not drinking anything, you're not engaging any sexual desire. When your body has starved from all of these things, the only thing now that remains in your body, which is the soul, it rises, it rises and experiences new heights and a new relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. Then this is why there is nothing equal to fasting. The sixth reason for why we should fast and commit to fasting and at least three days of every month and the best of these three days are the white days as we said is because fasting will intercede for a person on the day of judgment Allahu Akbar fasting will intercede for a person on the day of judgment and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said as-siyamu wal-qur'an yashfa'ani lil-abdi yawm al-qiyamah that fasting and Qur'an, your recitation of the Qur'an, your um, adherence to the laws of the Qur'an, yani your good deeds, all of that, and fasting was mentioned first, they will intercede for the person on the day of judgment. Allahu Akbar. And do you know what that means? Yani intercede for you, meaning they will defend for you. They will be your lawyers. Fasting will come and it will defend you on the day of judgment. The fasting would say, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, يَقُولُ الصِّيَامِ The fasting would say, أَيْ رَبِّ مَنَعْتُهُ الطَّعَامَ وَالشَّهَوَاتِ بِالنَّهَارِ فَشَفِّعْنِ فِيهِ The fasting would say, O oh my Lord, I prevented this person from food and from fulfilling his desire during the day. I prevented him from doing that. He wanted to. But I prevented him because he's fasting. He's not allowed to eat and drink and fulfill his desire. So then the fasting would say, allow me, allow me, O Lord, that I intercede for him, that I defend him. Allow me to be his lawyer and defend him until he enters the paradise. If your fasting is going to intercede for you on the day of judgment, bi'ithnillah, this is a one way straight to paradise, bi'ithnillah ta'ala, Allahu Akbar. How then after all this, does a person still not find inspiration and motivation to begin to fast for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The seventh reason for why we should fast at least three days of every month and commit to that is, let me, يعني, let me share this with you. You know, a fasting person is in an act of worship the entire time he fasts from the moment he fasts at Fajr until he breaks his fast at Maghrib. All this time, he's in an act of worship. Yani, that's what, for some countries, 13 hours of fasting, for some countries, 14 hours, for some countries less, for some countries more. But all this time, you are in a worship. A worship non-stop, even if you are sleeping, you're earning reward. You're in a worship. Now, to understand this better, let me say this. If I told you, read Quran for 14 hours non-stop, can you do it? You can't do it. If I told you, make dua for 14 hours non-stop, from Fajr to Maghrib, can you do it? You can't do it. Difficult. If I told you, sit down and make dhikr, hmm? from Fajr to Maghrib, non-stop, do not move, can you do it? You can't do it. The only deed that you can do continuously from Fajr to Maghrib is fasting. And, and, and how, how does a person leave this and not see the importance and the beauty in fasting and the reward in fasting? For my brothers and sisters in Islam, make a plan and start committing yourself to fasting. Allahu Akbar. Even if you're sleeping during the hours of fasting, angels are recording good deeds for you. Allahu Akbar. The eighth reason for why we should fast and commit to this great habit is that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ صَامَ يَوْمًا إِبْتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ اللَّهِ خُتِمَ لَهُ بِهَا دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ Allahu Akbar. 
And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, anyone who fasts a day for the sake of Allah, remember that's the condition. You must fast sincerely for the sake of Allah, not for anything else. And as I told you, fasting is a very sincere deed and a worship. No one knows about it. No one needs to know about it. You leave your house, Fajr time, don't eat anything. Come back home and break your fast without anyone knowing anything. And it could be achieved. And during the day, whether you're at work and that, no one needs to know that you're fasting. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in this hadith, whoever fasts one day for the sake of Allah, khutima lahu biha, and he dies that day, dakhal al-jannah. He enters the paradise. No question about it. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Yani, if you fast and you die the day you fast, you enter the paradise. MashaAllah. Now, isn't this everyone's wish? That he secures a spot for him in the paradise? That he does a deed that would guarantee him the paradise? Allahu Akbar. And wallahi, if someone is sincere in fasting and commits to this habit of fasting, perhaps, perhaps Allah Azza wa Jal will bless him that he takes his soul on a day in which he is fasting. The ninth reason for why we should fast, and what a beautiful reason this is, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لَخَلُوفُ فَمِ الصَّائِمِ أَطْيَبُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ رِيحِ الْمِسْكِ And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, that the breath of the fasting person, you know the breath of a fasting person? In the morning, his breath is normal, uh, because he recently brushed his teeth. But at Dhuhr time, Asr time, the breath of the fasting person begins to irritate mankind. Right? No, no one likes that breath. You might even be irritated by your own breath. But the Nabi said that the breath of the fasting person is more beloved and better to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the smell of musk. You know musk? M musk is a perfume, huh? Hey, that fragrance, musk. You smell it, musk is beautiful. Everyone likes to smell this. But the breath of the fasting person is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the smell of musk. Allahu Akbar. You know what that means? If that's just the breath of the fasting person, Imagine the fasting person himself. How much more is he beloved to Allah Azza wa Jal? How much more does Allah Azza wa Jal love him? If Allah Azza wa Jal loves the breath of the fasting person more than the beautiful smell of musk, imagine then the entire person. How much more is he beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allahu Akbar. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Allahi, yani, it's very important for us to commit to this worship of fasting. Yes, so what, my brothers and sisters in Islam, I agree with you. Fasting, it may weaken your body. Perhaps it will weaken your body by the end of the day. But it definitely, definitely will strengthen your heart. And it will strengthen your relationship with Allah. And it will strengthen a taqwa that is in the heart. Because that's exactly what fasting does and the purpose of fasting. It's there to upgrade your taqwa, to upgrade your iman, to polish your taqwa that is in the heart. Allahu Akbar. And the tenth reason for fasting is that fasting, well, there's many more. I know, Allah, I just wanted to not take too long. Like, subhanAllah, the lesson has already gone for 52 minutes. But I share this last thing with you. You know, in order to fast, do it properly. What do I mean by proper fasting? Meaning get up and have suhoor. Because there is barakah in suhoor. There is a blessing in suhoor. As the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us, inna fi suhoori barakah. So the fasting person is going to get up and have suhoor. And there's a special hadith about suhoor. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-mutasahireen. That Allah and his angels they confer their prayers, meaning they send their prayers upon those who are eating a suhoor. Allahu Akbar. You know, this is the same wording that we find in the Quran in Surah Al Ahzab when Allah says, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. 
And uh, it's the same wording that comes for the people that eat suhoor. That Allah and all the angels are sending their prayers upon those who are eating suhoor. Allahu Akbar. And you know what that means? What does it mean that Allah sends his prayers? Meaning Allah praises these people. This is what it means. If Allah is sending prayers upon the servant, meaning Allah is mentioning this servant and praising him among the angels in the paradise. And the angels sending their prayers upon you, it means that the angels are making dua for you. Oh Allah, forgive him. Oh Allah, accept from him. Oh Allah, you know, bestow your mercy upon him. The angels are making dua for you. That's what is meant by the angels praying upon you. Look, all this is happening when you're having suhoor. You haven't even started the minute of fasting yet. The day of fasting hasn't started yet. Imagine then when Salat al-Fajr or when Adhan al-Fajr is made. Imagine then. Imagine the reward then. If just having suhoor, Allah and all the angels are sending their prayers upon you. Imagine then when you begin the first minute of fasting, what kind of reward are we talking about? Allahu A'lam. Allahu A'lam what reward we're talking about. This is why Allah Azza wa Jal said, Al-Hadith Al-Qudsi, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he paraphrases, he says it, but it's the words of Allah Azza wa Jal. He says, إِلَّا الصَّوْمْ فَإِنَّهُ لِي وَأَنَا أَجْزِي بِهِ Fasting is for me and I give reward for it. Meaning we don't know what the reward of fasting is. The actual reward of fasting, we don't know. It's reserved with Allah Azza wa Jal. If it was discussed, it would be too long to discuss. For Allah Azza wa Jal said, it's for, innahu li, it's for me, wa'ana ajzi bih. I'll give its reward. I will compensate for the person who, who fasts. I'll give him, I'll pay him on the day of judgment. Allahu Akbar. What a loss for the person who hears this, knows that the payment is upon Allah and he still neglects and abandons this beautiful sunnah and deed of fasting. So my brothers and sisters in Islam commit to this fasting, especially the three days of every month. If you can do Monday and Thursday, three days of every month, alhamdulillah, the more the better. But I'm talking to you, at least, at least don't cut from this worship of fasting. And I'm talking to you this now, getting ready for Ramadan. We are now in the sacred month of Rajab. Sacred month of Rajab, in where the good deeds that are done in Rajab are huge. They are multiplied. As the scholars, rahimahumullah, mention, because this is a sacred honored month. So, yes, there is no specific hadith that uh, tells us to do a specific form of worship, but the deeds, the good deeds that we know about, it's recommended to increase and to do as much as you can in Rajab and in the holy months, in the sacred months. And this is unanimously agreed among the ulama, rahimahumullah. So fast in this month, whatever you can, and pray whatever you can, and make dhikr, but fasting, we're speaking about fasting now. And now the next month that's coming after Allahu Akbar, Rajab, almost half of it is finished. We only have another half and a little bit left. And then Sha'ban comes, Allahu Akbar, Sha'ban is the month of fasting. And it is a sunnah to fast Sha'ban. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to fast the entire month of Sha'ban except a few days. And then Ramadan comes and we attack fasting يعني, like we're ready. We're spiritually ready for Ramadan. Yalla, my brothers and sisters in Islam, come on. There's only, what? what's left for Ramadan? Nothing, nothing. 30, 40, about 45 days left for Ramadan. Hurry up and join, join, join the people that are fasting. Fast with them. Three days of every month at least. Today, as I said to you, is the first of these three days. If you've already, uh, if you're in a country in where it's already Thursday and you've eaten or whatever it is, doesn't matter. Uh, you can make up a third day. Yani, as I said to you, they don't have to be 13, 14, 15. That's the best. 13, 14, 15 is the best. That's what's preferred. If you cannot do that, then you can do any three days of the Islamic month. This is it. This is what I wanted to share with you all. Jazakumullahu khaira. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us sincerity and to grant us strength and power to worship him subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah azza wa jal that he cleanses our heart from every filth and evil quality we have within. And I ask Allah azza wa jal that he purify our hearts 
and he keeps them clean for us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he grant us a sincere repentance before we die. And we ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to witness this year's Ramadan and many Ramadans to come. And we ask him subhanahu wa ta'ala to make Ramadan a source of blessing for us. إِنَّهُ وَلِيُّ ذَلِكَ وَالْقَادِرُ عَلَيْهِ وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين جزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته